You know when it's the middle of the night and you suddenly get that urge to finally pick up that one pile of clothes sitting on your floor for days, or take out those cups sitting on your desk? Maybe you do end up cleaning your room and everything looks perfect, but suddenly it's the next day and everything is a mess again. But who has time to clean up everything when you have so much homework to do you don't even know where to start? This happens to me all the time. I think about all of my different classes, all of my homework, all of my extracurriculars, on top of that mounting pile of clothes on the floor and papers on my desk, and I get so overwhelmed that it's just easier to go back to bed and do nothing at all. Except for the fact that you can't truly relax knowing that there's things to be done. It's an endless cycle of being unproductive because you're overwhelmed and getting overwhelmed because you're unproductive. I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. One way I've been dealing with the burden of everything is to stay organized. Instead of a mounting to-do list that gets bigger day by day, staying organized allows me to tackle one thing at a time and I'll always know what I need to do by when, allowing me to prioritize the right things. Obviously though, that's easier said than done, and I'm not going to pretend that I have things perfectly down, but I know this journey can be difficult, so let's figure it out together. Welcome to the ultimate guide to staying organized. For me, the best place to start is always structure. Having structure in my life just feels so good and research even shows that it helps with stability, anxiety, prioritization, and planning. So here are some things you can do to get started. Use a calendar. The first step to building structure is planning ahead. If you want to be organized, you need to know what you have to do each week, where you have to be, and when everything is due. Representing this visually on a calendar is my favorite way to do so. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to have moving GIFs or all sorts of different colors. I simply use Google Calendar. I make a different calendar for each of the categories. For me, that's school, extracurriculars, YouTube, deadlines, and other, which is a catch-all for things that don't happen often, like appointments. Usually at the start of a semester, I would spend a day to go through the course outlines of all my classes and put in every single due date in advance. I would also put in the reoccurring classes I have, as well as the times for my extracurriculars like field hockey and soccer. Use a planner. If you've watched my videos for a while, I simply use a notebook as a planner to write out my daily and weekly to-do lists. I find that the way people use to-do lists can work in the opposite way you want it to. A large, huge mounting to-do list that is impossible to finish every day doesn't leave you satisfied at the end of the day, but completely burnt out and disappointed if you didn't finish everything. I like to keep my daily to-do list reasonable with one or two big tasks while adding small, fun, and easy tasks like making my coffee, tidying my room, or putting on makeup. Completing the smaller things gives me motivation to do the bigger things. Speaking of the bigger things, I like to divide them into smaller parts. For example, if a project is due, maybe I would divide it into doing the research, writing the rough draft, and then perfecting the final draft, all in separate bullet points, making things easier to manage. Establish a routine. Our brains like routine. Research shows that establishing and sticking to a routine is a great way to reduce our anxiety, improve our sleep, and feel better about our days. Like a good friend, a routine is something that I can always count on. It's dependable, helpful, and with me every single day. Personally, I build my routine around the important stuff. Wake up time, homework, exercise, and bedtime. And then expand it from there. With all of these tools, you should be all set for chapter two. Took her out the day after you said you wanted me without a doubt. Maybe then I could put it in. Take me home, go down the road with no feels. 
Research shows that messy workplaces are really distracting and diminish our ability to process information effectively. And that makes sense, right? I know that when my desk is a mess, I find it super hard to concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing. I also don't feel good when everything is out of place. I feel like I'm being crowded out of my own desk and that's just really stressful. But when I keep my workspace clean, it feels more like a sanctuary where I can look forward to spending time every day. It keeps my head clear and my mind at ease. For me, the best way to avoid clutter is to build cleaning into my daily routine. So each night before you go to bed, make sure to put away pens, papers, or dishes that I've accumulated throughout the day. This way, when you get out of bed in the morning, you'll be rewarded with a clutter-free, aesthetic workplace that will have you waking up feeling like you can do anything. In the morning, I tidy my room a bit by making my bed and picking up any clothes from the night before. The goal is to tidy a bit every day, which is something manageable, instead of letting everything pile up seemingly impossible to attack. I also try to keep my computer clutter free too, especially with online school. Every month or so, I go through my computer and put every document in its right folder and make sure all my notes are organized and accessible. Personally, I have one file for each of my courses and always title the document correctly because a laptop full of documents that have random letters can be so confusing. That way, using my computer doesn't feel like a chore and I'm able to focus all of my attention on what matters, doing my work. Now you're just missing one last thing. In this place I can focus on these sweet little moments with you Out of this place If there's one thing that we all want to do, it's multitask. Multitasking seems great, right? We think that it keeps us engaged and feels like we're getting things done and staying on top of everything. That is because when we're multitasking, we're always bouncing from task to task, checking one thing after the other off our to-do list. Unfortunately, this doesn't always tell the full story. For starters, multitasking is really inefficient. Neuroscientists know that our brain can't actually focus on two things at once, so when you think you're multitasking, you're actually just switching really quickly between activities. The problem is, when we do that, we're really inefficient. We forget important information and make avoidable mistakes, and we do it all more slowly. It's really a lose-lose. Another problem is that multitasking is really addicting. Each time we answer an email, read a page or two of our book, or finish a sheet of math homework, our brain produces dopamine, which is the pleasure neurochemical. The thing is, dopamine hits are actually really addicting, and research by Stanford University's Clifford Nass shows that long-term multitasking actually changes your brain, meaning that if you do this for too long, you'll have a harder time being productive even when you're focused only on one task. So if you want to be more organized, an important step is to focus on one thing at a time. A good rule is to spend at least 20 to 25 minutes on a task before switching to something else. Do this and your brain will reward you with a calmer and more organized mind. And who wouldn't want that? Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow my Instagram as well as I've been posting a lot more on there and all my stories and stuff. And yeah. Okay, bye. We go just the same, just the same. When it comes to boys, I guess we never learn. Boys will